Inside a greenhouse at Synthetic Genomics in La Jolla, paddles are keeping ponds of algae from getting scummy. I lead the genomics and genetic tool development team. Imad Ajawi works to create new strains of algae at Synthetic Genomics. He's the first author on a study published yesterday. It's about a new strain of GMO algae that Synthetic Genomics describes as a key milestone. It's a big leap forward, Ajawi says, because it produces double the oil of a natural algae strain, but still grows just as well as its leaner cousin in the wild. Think about it in terms of an athlete, right? Uh, athletes are very high in protein, they're very fit, but they're, they don't contain that much oil, that much lipid, right? <laughs> they're not that fat. Ajawi and his colleagues wanted algae that was both fat and fit. Not a marathon runner, not a couch potato, something more like a sumo wrestler. So they combed through the algae's 9,000 genes, narrowing in on about 20 that appeared to regulate fat. They selectively turned off each of those genes using CRISPR, a relatively new and powerful gene editing tool. When they turned off one particular gene, they saw a dramatic change. We realized that it was making a ton of fat. It was actually off the charts. <laughs> we remember, I remember being in the lab, talking to one of the RAs and asking to show me the data. And we were both wondering where the data point was for that specific strain. And it, it turns out that it was literally off the scale. Ajawi says if algae can produce more oil without slowing down growth, it could one day compete with fossil fuels. Synthetic Genomics was co-founded by human genome sequencing pioneer J. Craig Venter. At a conference in San Diego this week, Venter said the stakes for this work are high. With a president pushing coal uh, and denying climate change, that the urgency is greater than ever. And uh, as much as we can accelerate this, we would like to. Synthetic Genomics may be aiming to develop an alternative to fossil fuels, but they're actually working with ExxonMobil, one of the world's biggest oil companies, to get there. Exxon has funded algae research at Synthetic Genomics, and they've put out commercials featuring scientists who work on algae. And someday you might be calling me an energy farmer. Energy lives here. But is algae really going to power our daily commutes anytime soon? Scripps Institution of Oceanography algae researcher Greg Mitchell says no. At some local gas stations, we could be doing it within five years, you know, at small scale. But if we're talking about, you know, we'll say USA, a couple hundred million people doing it, you know, it's many decades away. Mitchell says synthetic genomics has pulled off a scientific feat with this study. But with gas still so cheap, costs would have to come way down before algae could become a meaningful source of energy. The deployment at scale is not there yet. So that, that's going to take quite a bit more time. And it may not be this organism, but this points the direction of how we can go, whether it's this, this organism or different organisms, that these tools can be used to improve the yields of uh, oil that we want. Imad Ajawi says algae biofuel is still very much in the research stage. With disruptive technologies such as this, you know, you really can't set a timeline. You have to be patient. And that's the good part about having ExxonMobil as a, as a partner as well, that they recognized that and knew that we needed to be patient in order to achieve success. Ajawi remembers when he first came to Synthetic Genomics seven years ago. They had a goal, doubling algae's oil production without hindering its growth. They're still a long way from reaching our gas tanks, but Ajawi says this week his team is celebrating their success at meeting that scientific goal. David Wagner, KPBS News.